A woman who follows me on this page sent me a direct message. I haven't stopped thinking about it. Her name is Shanika and she wrote to me, you have followers of color. Will you be silent on the murder of George Floyd or use your voice to speak out? I'm gonna call her on video right now. Shanika, hi. hi. So you are an elementary school teacher. You are a spokeswoman for Black History Month. And least importantly, you follow me on the internet. So I don't Zoom most people who DM me. <laughs> I, did, I would be Zooming like a lot of mom shamer and a few uh, eggplant emojis. But you were smart <laughs> and you were right. And so I asked you to Zoom with me. And here we are. Here we are. I'm a huge follower of you. I mean, I've been watching you since like MTV days. Oh. I, I love what you do and I love New Mom Who Dis, but I wanted to reach out to you because you have a platform and I wanted to know, like, because you are a white woman, what you are going to be doing with your voice. And, and like, you told me that you were doing all these things, but again, like, I had no idea because everybody was posting like a quote here or like a, you know, a thing there. But I thought it was important and especially being a mom, like, you've got a lot of followers who can take what you have to say and, and use that to help with their small children. So yeah. yeah, that's why I wanted to reach out, I guess. <laughs> but I think too, like what you made me realize is like, yes, bitch, you posted a thing and some swipe ups, but it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not 24 hours. It, it's not a 24 hour problem for everybody who's posting something. And I've had friends who, you know, I've had my white friends be like, hey, like, is it okay to post this? And I'm just like, guys, just treat it as if it's a human being and it doesn't matter what their skin color is. Like, what would you say? You don't need to get clarification or approval from a black person. Just speak as if there was a human person that, you know, was killed and, and it was unjust. What would you say? And so um, it's not even about what you post, it's what are you doing offline too? You know, that's, that's, the, that's the point. And you really brought it to my attention because sometimes I think as a white woman, how can I contribute to this? What can I that's say about it? How can I move the conversation forward? That's the thing too. Like even as a teacher, um, you know, the community that I teach in is mostly white and I feel like most of the teachers, I'm the only black teacher in my school. Right. So that's why I do get called to do the black history month presentations and like get called to do the announcements and things like that because people are like, okay, well, I don't, I don't know that much about it because it's not my experience. So like you do it, but it's all of our experience. Right. It, it's probably more impactful to hear from someone who isn't black. And I think that's another reason why I reached out to you in particular. What could I do that would move this conversation forward as a white woman and a white mom? Um, honestly, it starts in your home. I remember being like six or seven and walking home with my brother and a, a kid in a stroller turned over to us and pointed and called us the N-word. And the mom was just like, oh, oh and then they kind of left. And I was like, what is that? And I was like, there's no way this kid knew what they were talking about. It, it all stems from the home, right? They couldn't even walk. Oh my God. So you know, being able to, to, to say, you know what, this person's different. They're different and that's fine. That's fine. And I teach my kids, you know, if I got a cut, if you got a cut, we're both bleeding the same color. We're both the exact same. You know, the fact that I have more melanin shouldn't determine whether or not I'm better or worse than anybody else. I am so honored that someone as intelligent and lovely as you follows my page. And I, and I wonder from you what I should do, what I can do with my voice and my show and my platform. Um, first of all, I'm just so grateful that you even decided to talk to me. And, and when you responded, I was like, whoa, when I saw the blue tick, I was like, what? <laughs> so like, I wasn't expecting that. And, and, and being able to, to have this conversation with you, I think can help so many other people, people that look like me that follow you for people that don't look like me that follow you. I think that everyone can learn something. And I think that is what you made so clear for me when you reached out to me. And like, this is so stupid. We're talking about a DM, but like a DM can change somebody's perspective forever. I have the ability and the platform to do more. And what I do is I talk to people and I have conversations. That's my job. So I'm going to have some of those uncomfortable conversations that will possibly, you know, teach me and hopefully others a little bit more. I think the world will be a better place for it, Jesse. Oh, Shanika. Okay. Well, now I have to, 
someone better look after my kids because I have work to do. We all have work to do, don't worry. <laughs> I am a white mom from Canada. I wanted to speak to a black mom in America to better understand how our experiences differ. Keisha Beckford wrote a really powerful article called Dear White Moms, and I'm gonna speak to her right now. So you are an incredibly accomplished dancer and writer and educator, but today I want to talk to you as a mom. Great. That's perfect. Okay. Spoiler alert, I am a white mom and I have always thought of myself as being, you know, I have this diverse friend group. I am racially sensitive, but this week I really have felt like I have so much more to learn. And so today I want to know what I can do, what all of us can do to be better allies and better moms. Yeah, it's such a huge topic. And, you know, the thing that's kind of sad to me is the people who are just like, well, what do you want me to do about it? Who are not even, you know, open to the conversation. And those are the people who are doing the most damage and need to hear it the most. Yeah. And the people who don't realize that this is not about them, because at this point, it's, it's about all of us. Right. I felt this week you know, seeing the George Floyd images and the videos, I felt a way that I have not felt before, which was like as a mom and as a human being, just so outraged and helpless and sad. And I wonder what, what you felt. Well, just how do you protect your child? You know, like how do you protect your child from their skin? And the answer is you, you can't, you know? So black mothers are, we're terrified. I have two kids. I have a boy who is 11 and a half, and for a black boy, I mean, it, it's, it can be terrifying just to think that when he goes out, it doesn't matter if he's 12, he's not given the benefit of the doubt of being a child, right? He's seen as like a scary guy with the potential for harm, which is, it's horrifying. You know, every moment is, you know, you can't do this when I'm not with you, or God forbid you ever get stopped. And I think a lot of white people think it's if, right? You're living in a totally different world, but it's not if, it's, it's when. So some of the conversations we talk about are what do you do when you go into a store, right? For black kids, especially boys, like get a bag, get a receipt, no matter what. Don't touch anything you do not intend to buy. Don't pick it up, look at it, put it back. Don't pick up, look at it, put it back. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Do not wear a hoodie smile like i mean it's just I, I it's just infuriating that you have to have just a host of rules to follow just to enter a store and these are conversations you've had with your son already at 11 and a half yeah so we've started having those just so it's you know it's training you want it to be muscle memory it has to be like ingrained in you and i think our privilege too as white parents is that we don't necessarily have to talk about this. Like that you have the luxury, you know, you have the luxury to think that this is like not something that really affects you. And I mean, it's with us all the time. Um, you know, we went on vacation when he was 10 and we've been to this lodge before. It's a water park in Wisconsin. And my kids, you know, they're kids. They go into a store, they were really excited. And the shopkeeper said to them, don't take anything, don't break anything. Wow. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. And I don't know if she says that to everybody, but it doesn't matter. You know, mm -hmm. we paid money to be at this hotel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I just let the managers have it. You did? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And how... How do you explain why? I mean, they, they have to know. It's just one simple reason. It's, it's the color of your skin. You know, there's, you have to tell them that it's nothing you did wrong. You know, you're still a wonderful, beautiful human being. But unfortunately, this is the way we have to live to stay safe. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, we feel like we followed the rules. We've done everything, like, right um, but we still don't have the privileges that other people have. You know, white moms, this is not anything they ever have to think about. Ever. If I made the same choices they did. Wow. I've, I've just, I find it so complicated and I just, I feel like I don't really 
know anything. <laughs> After all of these years of feeling like I knew so much and I was so woke and I was this and that, I feel like I know nothing and I'm starting at the beginning. It warms my heart that people like you are doing the work and trying to bring this to friends to help them who might be not be as involved. I mean, between COVID and this, the world feels like it's burning. Yeah. Um, I, I just hope things can get better for the next generation. I mean, that's that's been my real fear and that we can make some real like lasting change. Part of my privilege is that I don't have to have tough conversations about racism with my kids, but I realize now that I should. In fact, I have to. I just don't know how. And so I'm gonna talk to somebody who can help. Hi, Dr. Diaz. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. You are a clinical assistant professor at the Department of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry at NYU. Yes. I am a white mom who wants to do better. Uh, well, you know, I applaud you and I applaud those efforts. Thank you. And I'm really hoping that you can help me and so many more. I have two and a half year old twins. I have never talked to them about race or racism because I've always thought that, you know, they don't see race or color at this age. Is that wrong? Well, it's not wrong. It's true that two and a half year olds don't see um, the social construct of race and, and racism, but children absolutely see color. They see differences because that's how they understand their world. They're categorizing shapes and fruits and, and cars and all kinds of things. So they're trying to understand who, how do people fit into different categories or boxes? So they do see it. They just don't know how to understand it yet. I have spent the last six months saying that this is orange and this is red, but I have never referred to the color of their friend's skin or the color of the skin in the character in a book they're reading because to me that's like, ooh, don't mention it. Maybe they'll be colorblind forever. Right, but right. So I think in, you know, in past generations, people I think try to embrace this idea of colorblindness because I think they were really trying to convey this lovely and well-intentioned message that we should all be treated the same. We're all human on the inside, right? We've all heard that saying and we're all the same. But the thing is that that's just not true. You know, the world responds to people differently based on the color of their skin. And so when we teach kids, hey, just be colorblind, it's also like not embracing really important and integral parts of people's identities. And so when should we talk to our kids about racism? Right away. For really young children, we are starting the conversation about differences and similarities in people. Hey, there are different shades of skin tone. Did you notice that in the book we were reading that this person has white skin and this person has tan skin and this person has brown skin? And so we can begin to have the conversation so that it's literally not a taboo subject. It's just what we talk about because that's the world, right? Right. And actually, let me just pause and say that one of the other things that happens for moms and dads who are trying to have these really uncomfortable conversations, they're uncomfortable for us because we already have the adult perspective of how the world has, you know, sort of unfolded. For them, it's just a conversation. It's so funny because I, I, last season on this show, I talked to a woman about how to talk to our kids about sex. And it's the same advice. Thanks. You can't be too nervous or uncomfortable or they think it's taboo. Right. And so especially for young kids, that's exactly how to start it out. It's not a taboo topic. This is something we talk about. We, and then you begin to expand the discussions as they get a little bit older. Then you start introducing the concept of fairness and injustice and how some people get treated differently because of the way they look. Did you know that, buddy? Yeah, it's, it's really too bad. And as they get a little bit older, these are really, really meaningful conversations because especially for white children, it really begins to teach them early on how to be allies of marginalized people. And that conversation starts as early as five? Certainly by kindergarten, this should have already been a, a conversation. So I only did this yesterday, but for the first time I started to look at the books on my kids' shelves. I started to think about the Disney movies they watch and it is predominantly white characters, like a lot of anthropomorphic animals, but very few people of color. Right. Am I unintentionally sending them a message with what I'm showing them? Well, 
I'm sure you didn't mean to, but I think this is exactly what, you know, um, parents might not even notice and should begin to notice. Mm -hmm. So unintentionally, yes, that's exactly what your, your kids could sort of come to the conclusion of is that this is what everybody looks like and this is who the positive characters are. And so what, one of the things that you can begin to do is to begin to introduce a diverse array of books of all, you know, that sort of demonstrate characters of all um, skin tones and physical appearance. I think the one thing that we can hopefully take away that I'm taking away from this is like, I'm going to be a better parent because of it. I am going to be a more actively engaged parent and I am going to ensure that my kids are putting good and positive into the world. Kids are not born racist. We all know that. And you know, here's the thing. This is actually the opportunity that parents have to shape the understanding and shape the experiences of their kids. And so if you just leave it to them sensing the nonverbal messaging in their environment and what they're seeing on TV or what they hear, they will fill in the gaps. And then we've missed an opportunity to help them understand it differently. And that's, I think, the most important part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we, and like, I don't know, I just feel, I feel emotional. I understand. And I'm going to try not to cry, but I just feel like, you know, I feel guilty. I feel like even though my kids are so little, I haven't done enough. And like, it's taken so long for me to realize that I have to do more. So. Thank well, you. you know what? I, I understand. I always tell parents, um, don't feel guilty if you've missed an opportunity or something didn't go as planned or it wasn't your finest parenting moment just do over and do better. So I, I understand though. I think a lot of parents are feeling what you're feeling. Um, Dr. Diaz, I am so grateful to you and I Thank know you. so many of my viewers will be as well. And I can speak on behalf of all of us and to say that we, we want to do better and we are going to strive to do better as parents. I want parents to really take the chance and the opportunity to have these uncomfortable conversations so that they're the ones shaping their child's experience, not, not everything around them. What you're saying seems so simple. It really does. It starts with pointing at, at, at a character in a book. And, you know, ideally it, it ends with, with changing the world. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much.